Hey there, I'm not Dan, but in this video we're going to be learning about the ideal gas law. It's... When bitter nights are calling, can't find no sleep. Can't you see I'm falling? Welcome back to the final video in this series on the gas laws. We have saved the best for last, as the ideal gas law is my personal favorite of all the gas laws. It's simple, it's easy to use, and most of all, it's fun to say. The equation is PV equals NRT, or as I like to call it, Pvnrt. So to learn more about Pvnrt, let's head on into the computer. Be sure to grab a calculator before you do. All right, let's go. All right, so here we go with Pvnrt. We have the same four variables that we have uh, in all the other equations. We got pressure, volume, moles, and temperature. Uh, the only thing that I'm going to point out here is that volume here must be in liters. So if the question gives you milliliters, simply divide by 1,000 and you'll be good to go. Uh, the only new thing in Pvnrt here is R, which stands for the ideal gas constant. So the name is constant, which implies that it's the same number every time, except, ironically, there actually are three different values for R, all based on whichever unit for pressure that you are using. Okay, so if pressure is being measured in ATM, then the value for R is 0 0.0821. If the pressure is being measured in kilopascals, then your value is 8.31. And if pressure is measured in millimeters mercury, then the value is 62.4. So you just simply pick out which one of these three uh, based on the unit of pressure, and then you plug it in, and then you're good to go. All right, so let's take a look at a few examples. How many moles of oxygen will occupy a volume of 3.2 liters at 0.97 atm and 25 degrees Celsius? All right, so our equation is PV equals nRT. All right, let's start with pressure. All right, so well, that's this one right here, the 0.97 atm, so 0.97. All right, volume, 3.2, it's right there, so 3.2 equals moles, well that's what the question is asking for, so I'm going to put in an N. All right, R, so that's our ideal gas constant, pressure is being measured in ATM, so we're going to use 0 0.0821, so 0 0.0821 goes right here. And then our temperature, which here it's given to us in Celsius, but remember, temperature must be in Kelvin, so we have to add 273 to get 298. All right, so now that you've done that, that is the chemistry part of it, plugging in the numbers in their correct spots. Now it's just a matter of algebra. And obviously there are multiple different ways you can do this, but the way that I prefer um, is to do the algebra first and then do the arithmetic second so that you're only having to round once. Okay, so let me show you what I mean. So N is over here, which is what we're trying to isolate. So I'm going to divide both sides by the 0.0821 and by 298, so they cross out. And over here, we're going to do the same thing, divide by 0.0821 and by 298. So what we're going to do is we're going to pick up our calculators now, and we're going to multiply 0.97 times 3.2 divided by 0 0.0821 equals divided by 298 equals. And when you do that, you get that N equals 0.12687. And now we need to round that for sig figs. So our original numbers here all have only two sig figs. So I count 1, 2. The next number is a 6, which means we round up. So this is 0.1 three and our units are moles. All right, so that's the first example. Let's take a look at the second one. At what volume will 25 grams of carbon dioxide occupy at a temperature of 20 degrees Celsius and a pressure of 625 millimeters mercury? All right, so once again, we've got Pvnrt, PV equals NRT. And now we just need to plug stuff in. All right, so pressure is right here. That's the 625. 
Volume is what we are looking for, so I'm going to put a V equals. Now moles. Well, there are no moles in this question, but we do have grams. And if you take your grams and divide it by the molar mass, then you can get moles. So the molar mass of carbon is 12. The mass of oxygen is 16. 16 times 2 is 32, plus the 12 from carbon is 44. So over here, we're going to do our 25 grams over 1 times the 1 mole over 44 grams. So really, it's just 25 divided by 44. And since we have two sig figs, that comes out to 0.57 moles. Okay, so 0.57 is what we are going to put in for moles. All right, for our uh, value for R, well, this time pressure is measured in millimeters mercury, so I'm going to grab this 62.4 and plug it in there. And temperature is 20 degrees Celsius plus 273 gives you 293. All right, this time our variable is on the other side of the equal sign, so we're going to simply divide both sides by 625. And do the same thing right here. We're going to cancel that out. So what we'll do is we'll do 0.57 times 62.4 times 293 divided by 625. And so what we'll get there when we calculate that all out, we get 16.67. And we can have uh, only two sig figs because as you can see right here, 25 is only two sig figs. So one, two. The next number is a 6, which means we're going to round this up to 17, and this being volume, our units are liters. All right, so that's how that works. And then, as I always have, here are some more example problems for you guys to work out on your own. So here you go. We're going to pause here real quick. You're going to work them out, and then uh, once you're ready, hit play again, and then the answers will pop up. All right, so pause in 1, 2, 3, pause. All right, so here are your answers. Go ahead and check them out, see how you did. And if you have any questions about them, please be sure to let me know. All right, thanks a lot, guys. Okay, so a fairly common question that students have is, how do I know when to use Pufnert or when do I use the combined gas law? And that's a great question. Unfortunately, it has a very simple and easy answer. The combined gas law has two of everything two pressures, two volumes, two moles, two temperatures, whereas Pufnert has only one of every variable. So all you got to do is read the question, and then you just count how many of each variable you've got, and then use the corresponding equation. Just like that. All right, thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any further questions, please be sure to comment below. And while you're at it, hit that like button and hit that subscribe button and join us on this adventure known as chemistry. Remember, I'm not Dan and neither are you. Check you later.